Today on Marketing Mavericks, we talked to Scott Eddy and Alex DeCaro, social media experts, about building a community before the brand. Coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Marketing Mavericks is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Marketing Mavericks, episode 44, recorded Thursday, February 26th, 2015. How to build a community on Twitter. Welcome to Marketing Mavericks, where we talk about everything at the intersection of marketing and technology. I'm your host, Tanya Hall, and today will be no different. We'll talk all about everything that's happening in social media and specifically how to build community before the brand. How do you actually build community? How do you get people to start following you and engage with you on social media long before you actually even start promoting a product or service. Seems that we used to do it the other way around. Well, not anymore. And our guests today are going to prove how they actually do that. We're also going to talk about teaching social media at the university level, what students are learning, and how they're going to have to adapt with the next generation of marketing. So our guest today, we have an in-studio guest, which is fairly unusual for this show, uh, and that is Scott Eddy, or Mr. Scott Eddy, uh, as it is on Twitter. Welcome, Scott. (laughs) <laughs> nice to be here. And uh, your title is uh, you're the Knight Innovator in Residence. No, no, wait. You're the Global Brand Ambassador. I'm sorry for um, what's the company again? Zipkick. Zipkick, which we have actually the uh, founder. I think you're your boss. Yeah, here, he's over in there. the audience. Hello, <laughs> my sensei. <laughs> your sensei. Mm, that's actually kind of cool. Um, and we also have Alex. I'm going to say. I'm going to pronounce your name. De, it's it's so much better when you do it because you have the accent. De, <laughs> All right. De, Car- De Carvalho? Uh, Alex De Carvalho. Yeah, see, well, I got close. And you're the Knight Innovator in Residence at FIU. And uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. And what is your Twitter, Twitter handle if people want to follow along with that, with that, your Twitter? It's Alex DC. See, so easy. I know we were talking before the show. I need to shorten mine. Tanya Hall Radio, they've been telling me over and over <laughs> again, you're not just radio anymore. One of these days, I'll shorten that. Tanya Hall Twit. Tanya Hall Twit. I don't know if that sounds so good. I mean, I love Twit. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but somebody somewhere might make a joke about that. Um, so so I'm glad to have you join us, Alex. And uh, you're out in Florida, right? Yes, I am in Miami. Thanks so much. We, you know, I don't know why you just not you just felt like you were just too good to be here in studio with us, but whatever. <laughs> no, I would love to be there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think. Next uh, time. Scott was talking about he and Kim and I think it's Jason, right? Are going to go to the uh, wine tasting this afternoon. Noted I did not get an invite to that. Um, but <laughs> they have a huge afternoon plan. I think they called it Princess Kim, who was actually on one of our previous shows, who's here today, Kim McNicholas. And she was actually on a show about racing. We talked all about racing. We talked about her tech startup and stuff that she's doing. You know, hello, Kim, out in the audience there. <laughs> So, um, so Scott, um, I actually have to thank him for introducing us. You, um, you have a pretty big following on social media and you're a brand, you're an advocate for certain brands. Uh, you've certainly worked with a lot of different, you've worked in the travel and hospitality space. Um, and you kind of focus on that. Let's just back up a little bit to talk a little bit about why you're here and what your background is. You, you weren't always in marketing. Uh, you didn't no. actually go to school for marketing. You started off in, in finance, is that right? Yeah, I, I actually didn't go to school at all. Right from high school, I went to go work at a stock brokerage firm and ended up working there for 10 years. You know, And, and the good thing about working there is you, you get taught how to sell, which is something that's, that's usable, highly usable in pretty much any industry in the world. So it's, it's, it's great. You know, I, um, I, we talked before the show, I, my background is I used to work in, uh, cable television, telecom internet, but I developed sales training for employees. And I remember one of the first things I would teach them in training class that any skill that they used that I taught them on how to sell, they could apply to anything in life. And I think that applies today, but it's just in a different way when it comes to social media, it's really about selling 
yourself today versus in the past, it was about more about selling a product or service. It's always been about the personality. And I've heard you talk about that a lot about the personality behind you as a social media person. Um, so when, when did you kind of evolve? When did you discover that social media was going to be that uh, evolution for you in your next career? Well, you know, I worked at the firm for about 10 years and after that, I, I went overseas to visit a friend in Thailand and I, I just fell in love with the country. And I, I really decided that I want to live overseas forever. So I, I was in Thailand for a very long time and it's my home base, including up till today. But I've also spent a lot of time in Spain and London and Philippines, Portugal. So, you know, it's um, traveling around and me having an addiction to develop new relationships wherever I go, it's just, it became natural to just post a lot and tweet a lot and so just you engage just, a lot on social media. Did you just find yourself on Facebook one day or did you start um, with some other platform? Did you just just signed up to Twitter and just started, like what was the the, the impetus? What was the, the, t the moment when you realized this was something that was going to pull you away from the industry that you were in? Well, I, I signed up for Facebook just like everybody else does to stay in touch with family and friends, to just stay uber closer to the to your connections no matter where you are in the world. Um, and, you know, I just found that engagement became very easy. And I, just like most people, signed up for Twitter. I sent a couple tweets and I was like, you know, I don't understand this. This is just a Facebook status update over and over again. And I didn't use it again for about a year, year and a half. And then I came back to it. And I, I would venture to guess maybe 2011, the end of 2010. And I really started to get serious just to see what would happen. And I gained traction very, very quick. And it, it just, it all steamrolled from there. And, I, and I'm prefacing all this conversation about <clears throat> social media and how you got started because Right now, today, you have 581,272 followers. And you see that kind of following, certainly with um, social media ambassadors, people that I know we have frequently off and on uh, on our shows. But the idea that somebody who wasn't in marketing, you you were just basically using social media as an, as a novice, as something like everybody else was using. And you really turned that into a community long before you really started promoting brands. I want to talk further about how somebody might go about doing that, what was important to you and what you kind of attribute that to as well as what you're doing. I also want to, to, to get to Alex here. So Alex, uh, we welcomed you from Florida, um, sunny Florida. And uh, <laughs> I've been following you for many, many years. We were talking about that this morning. It's funny, I, we've never actually met uh, IRL in real life, but uh, I've been following you. You have a very recognizable profile uh, picture, avatar. And I was like, wait a minute, we've been connected for many years and you've actually done quite a bit uh, in the social space. What what actually got you started in social media and in marketing and social media? You know, I got started uh, pretty long ago, I would say over 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. And I was living in Paris at the time and I had uh, just gotten uh, divorced and I found myself uh, basically alone in Paris. And uh, I mean, without any uh, friends, really, uh, because I, I realized that all the friends I'd met were through my wife or with my wife. And when you get divorced, your, your entire lifestyle changes. And so, you know, you <laughs> basically you have to make new friends. And I was like, OK, now what am I going to do? And, and I have a pretty global background. My, my mom is from Finland. My dad is from Brazil. Um, uh, he was a diplomat, so I lived everywhere. So I wanted to connect to the world. And Skype was just coming out at the time. Uh, LinkedIn was, had barely started. Um, there were uh, Facebook, of course, didn't exist. Twitter didn't exist. But I used things like Friendster, uh, eCademy in the UK, different things, trying to connect to people around the world. And I discovered an amazing tech and blogger community in Paris that was online, uh, some amazing bloggers. And then I discovered that they're meeting up. They have uh, you know, they were meeting up in, in bars at night, at cafes. They were creating uh, competitions and contests and parties. And what and, about what year uh, was that that, you, that, that, that that took place? So that was about 2004, 2005. You, when you and I were talking before, um, just to kind of skip back a little bit, we, we were kind of making mm -hmm. jokes about this long before Facebook. You had, I mean, I was telling you like in like 1999. It makes me feel so old to say 1999. 
<laughs> but I, I remember 90, 98, 99, you know, I'm in chat rooms, I'm in European chat rooms. And the reason we talked about, and I want to get to this in a minute, this idea of culture and uh, geography and how that's come to play. And I know, I know that's been important to you, Scott, and kind of how cultures engage and the relationships that they build versus maybe even here in the United States and why in some other countries people are able to build community online quicker and that really does relate to what the culture is in the, in the geographical area where they're from. You know, I uh, I used to go into European chat rooms and I remember meeting friends who would fly from from London. They met me in a chat room to the United States and people were flying all over to meet each other because they built these relationships. Again, long before MySpace, long before Facebook. Um, and I think culture does play a part in that. What would you say? I mean, does, do you feel like that is an impact on on what you've seen engagement now that you're here in the United States, specifically Miami, probably not as uh, social, although that's changing, uh, turning into the new Boulder and new Austin. But would you say that culture has played a part in building community first? I think so, definitely. And uh, there's something about social networks. Uh, when they first get started, the, the people that are using those social net social networks are uh, very interesting people. They're, they're uh, they're very curious. They know how to use uh, technology, and they try to understand how does that work. So it happens with all these new things. When Twitter came out, the first people on Twitter were, you know, very interesting people. And Elo, for example, just came out, and you know, I, we don't know if it's going to work or not. Probably not. But the people who are using it are the most, let's say, tech savvy and uh, really interesting people to connect with. And I think that that has a lot to do with, you know, also uh, not only understanding social media, and, but also connecting with interesting people that help then to build your, your own community. I, you know, Alex, Alex uh, uh, Scott, who you've introduced me to, Scott, you, 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 you talked about ta starting off in Thailand and the, the Asian culture, I think in general, is very much about relationships and you do business with the people that you build relationships with. And the, the, the kind of cheesy comment I think that we've made from time to time is that, you know, it's all about the relationships and the, who you know, and that's why social media has been popular because it's about referrals. How really important is the, the idea of the Asian culture compared to maybe even the culture we have in the United States on the success of social media? To be honest, I probably, I, I most likely would not be where I am if I never went overseas and really opened up my mind to all these cultures, all the different cultures in Asia, all the different cultures in Europe, I, I definitely wouldn't be where I am because you, to, to live in Asia for a long period of time, especially doing business mm -hmm. over there, you have to unlearn a lot of the psychology and, and business lessons and even day-to-day -day normal conversational things that you learned growing up in America, mm -hmm. you have to unlearn them and really learn their cultures and, and learn how to adapt the two and how to commingle the two. You know, I, if you don't do that, there's going to be friction on a daily basis and you're going to be miserable. And you grew up here in the United States in a very traditional family in a very traditional probably neighborhood, right? Yes, and very you, much. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. So <laughs> Seriously? I didn't know you were in Miami. Okay, so, or, or yeah, okay, Florida. Um, so, and the culture being different, when when you started getting on social media, did you see that also the same, the way that people treated each other socially on the web? Was that any different than how people were treating you from the United States? Well, you got to understand one thing. When I first, Facebook was invented after I was living offshore overseas for five years. So I went overseas in 99. And when Facebook came out in 2004 and really started to gain traction when 2005, something like that, um, that was when I was already in Thailand. And I, I don't know if you know this, but Thailand is considered the most social place in the world. Bangkok has, I think, 12.8 million people in the city center. 8.9 of them are daily active Facebook users, more than in any biggest city in the world. And also, if you're looking at Instagram, uh, three out of the last four years, the most Instagram place on the planet was Bangkok. So, you know, being over there and that really warm culture of they are the kindest people you ever seen in your life. You know, a lot of my early friends were all in Southeast Asia, whether it be expats that were there for a long time or Asians. So I really had a warm network to start off with on social media. So I, I just basically grew it from there and 
if you also add in that I was raised in a very strict household, my father was a cop and, you know, I was thrown through a wall if I didn't say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. So, <laughs> Which is nothing uh, <laughs> wrong with that, by the way. I yeah. grew up in a very, uh, uh, my father was uh, in the ministry, and so I went a very strict household, too. No, I had to, like, say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and <laughs> yes, sir, and all those things. And and I don't, I, I think that there's some cultural, you know, uh, relevance into why social media is is successful for some businesses specifically, and whether that's a personal brand in the United States, so, Alex, you teach um, students on marketing and um, moving forward in journalism and that sort of thing and using social media. And one of the things that you shared with me, which I thought was pretty interesting, is that, that these students are taught to not make it about themselves and to, to basically go against the things that you know have been proven and being successful in social media. Talk a little bit about that and what's broken with our education system today, especially at the university level. Well, so I've, I've basically been teaching at, at schools of communication at, at the University of Miami School of Communication and also at uh, the FIU School of Journalism and Communication. And one of the things about journalism is that they teach students to take themselves out of the story. You know, when you're reporting on the story, you're trying to be uh, neutral, uh, basically very fair and presenting both sides and, and really not presenting your own side or your own bias. But social media is the opposite. Social media is really the story of you. It's it's the making of you. Uh, it's really, you know, you're, you're creating your own uh, personal brand, uh, let's say, online. So you are part of that story. Um, however, teachers are, uh, you know, teaching students uh, to take themselves out of the story all the time. And I think this is a big shift that they have to make uh, when they get out of college and uh, start working and uh, start really creating their own profile and their own brand, um, let's say. What um, What is it that you think we need? they need to do differently uh, at the university level to better prepare students to be able to market their journalism or the products that they're trying to market? What do we need to change? Well, so I'm obviously not going to criticize the entire university system. What? But there's there's something, uh, well, but there's something I, th I think that, you know, uh, in universities, you tend to teach students in, in silos. You know, here you're an architecture student or engineering or, or business. But when you get out to the real world, it looks more like a co-working environment where you have all kinds of people uh, bumping into each other and, and working together and figuring out how to work together. Uh, so I think that's one thing in, in education in general that needs to change or could improve is where you have more a more multidisciplinary approach. Uh, another thing I think is that students need to think about their own careers more in a agile startup kind of way. You know, uh, obviously there's no jobs for life, but you really have to create your, your next your next steps all the time. You have to, you know, learn how to learn and learn how to position yourself for, for the next thing, you know, which might be just a year or two years down the road. You already have to start working on that now in a very startup -y kind of way. So I'm going to change gears a little bit and talk about what you're doing now. Um, and, and then and then we'll kind of, you know, talk a little bit more again about um, education and some things that you're doing, Alex, uh, in the way of um, teaching, you know, young children about uh, startups. So let's talk about Zip, Zip, Zipkick. What is a Zipkick? Zipkick is a new travel app. It's a booking app that's going to be launched sometime in the next two to three, four weeks. Um, it, it's basically going to turn the travel booking industry upside down. It's, uh, they, they have a very, they have a patent pending algorithm that really changes the, the game. So how does it change? And we've seen a lot of changes uh, in travel. I mean, I, we have a travel guru here, uh, Russell, who I don't know if he's here right now, but he's, uh, he's hooked stuff. me up. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I rarely use the word guru, but I gotta tell you, Russell, is definitely the man. He knows all the sites out there. He certainly hooked me up. I'm getting ready to go to Russia, and I got a three hundred dollar <laughs> ticket to Russia because you know wow. why? Alex is the man. Um, good job, Alex. Good, uh, not Alex. <laughs> I mean, uh, Russell's the man. Oh, there so, you go. <laughs> so there you go. I know Alex on the brain here. Um, so so why is Zipkit going to change travel? What what is it about that app that's going to make it, things change? They they've been working on this algorithm for the past two and a half years. And they really came up with something where it's it's a personalized, much, much more personalized selection. And it sort of works like 
uh, artificial intelligence, where the more you use it, the more it learns your t your taste, your preferences, mm -hmm. and there's no scroll bars, there's no check preferences. Once you set your preferences in the beginning, then it's you know very simplified, where it just gives you the five results, and whichever result you don't want, you swipe it off the screen and it gets replaced. So you never have more than the five results on the screen. Instead of when you go on Expedia and Kayak, you get 1,500 results. And then obviously the ones that they have the highest commission on is going to be near the top. So those are the ones that you book. So this app, um, it, is it just for for airline travel? I mean, what, what does it cover? It's launching with hotels and then airlines going to be added very shortly. Okay. And when does it launch? Within the next few weeks. Just working out the final case. Is that right, Jason? <laughs> we got the we got the approval, the nod. I got so, the thumbs up. The thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up. So, um, so what what about travel and hospitality and tourism attracted you? I mean, that's by the fact that you were traveling yourself, right? He, well, the the thing was because I was posting so much because I was so active on social media while I was traveling, I I started to gain traction with the people that are the audience for the travel industry, whether it's travel bloggers, whether it's tourism boards, whether it's, you know, all things like that. And then I just really said, you know, this looks like it really could be a business, but you know, I had a couple digital agencies in Bangkok and they, they did okay. And we worked with a lot of the hotel brands and, and things like that. But I, I really, I think that the most important thing you can do as an entrepreneur is to build up your personal brand as big as you can make it. How do you do that? So how do you get 500 plus fans? I mean, uh, followers, people who are tweeting about you, people who are posting about you. What did you use? Or what, did you just say, um, I'm just going to talk to everybody? Did you use certain software? I have friends who, for example, use a variety of different software sites and tools to help, you know, figure out who they should follow, who should, they should engage with. How important is the technology component to you? And and what what is maybe something that's a favorite of yours to use? Well, First off, I chase the conversations on social media. I don't chase the big names. Okay. Because the big names typically are not going to engage with you. Okay. You know? So by by chasing the conversation, you 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 look for people that are talking about something specifically? Well, I I tweet about five things. I, I tweet the my most used hashtags are luxury, travel, entrepreneurs, startups, and wine. Okay. So, and wine. And wine. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the good thing is, is I have conversations with some of the top wine bloggers in the world, and the same thing in the travel in the entrepreneur space. So it's 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 really really cool. So I would go after companies and industries that are super engaging online, and I would look at their most recent tweets, chase the people that are commenting on these tweets, the people that are retweeting, the people that are actually engaging on these tweets. And I'd sit down and follow a thousand of these people every day. A thousand a every, day? Every single day. So wow. sometimes okay. you'll get 10% following back. Sometimes you'll get 60% following back. Okay. And then the people that don't follow back, I unfollow them. Okay. So I, I'm very aggressive. And with, that's important to note. I yeah. mean, I, I want to stop right there. Okay. So if somebody you follow doesn't follow you you start un you, you unfollow them after a week or two and i think that's really important because i don't do that and and i know a lot of people who do and those people have also grown their community and i think that makes sense it, you think well that seems like you know is it really it, but you can't have a conversation with somebody that's not following you and there's tools and software and i'll post some of those that if you need help figuring out who's following you or not that you could do do you have a site that you use to help you do that or i, I do but let me just comment on okay. what you were just saying because <laughs> the most important thing is even if it's a friend of mine like if you unfollow mm -hmm. me automatically i'm going to unfollow you because twitter only lets you follow 10% more than you're following. Right. So I'm always capped and I, I like unlimited potential. I don't, and it's one of the reasons why you can't grow unless you pay right. Facebook and Instagram and mm -hmm. you know, these other sites. So what, what I, what I, what I like to do is I can add you to a list mm -hmm. and that's all I do is monitor my list. Mm -hmm. So if I add you to my tech list or my real friends list, I monitor those on a close, close, uh, you know, my, my microscope and I don't have to be following you. You don't have to be following me. I can still see your feed. 
You know, if you're not following me, I'm going to be really hurt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but that's a really important thing, too. And yeah. I, I have heard many, many people who, again, the reason we're talking about this, I get a lot of emails about, you know, how do I get a huge following? How do I use this to build brands? Because we've had people come on the show who actually use their personal brand, like yourself, Scott, um, to to create. And they get hired because they have all these followers. And and because they have a community, they have built an audience. It's building the audience before the brand, which is what you've been doing. You follow a thousand people a day. You add them to list. Lists are critical. The list of the goldmine of Twitter. I, 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 and it's completely under, people do not talk about lists. And I'm really bad about, I have like one list and I don't even want to admit what it is, but <laughs> I don't use it just for the record. It's, it's related to the bachelor show. <laughs> It's very, very time consuming. That is the reason most people don't do exactly. it. Exactly. You have to be able to dedicate the time. So let's let's talk about that for a second. How first off, how many lists do you have? I don't even know. Maybe See? 50, 60. 50 is a lot of lists. Yeah. And But how, I curate them every day. I remove the dead weight. I add people. I How much time did it take you to build that? It's per day. I, let's just say like today. How how much time? I mean, today you're gonna be out drinking wine, let's face it, but how? <laughs> the, the thing is, before the mo normal person wakes up, I'm already finished my day's work. I wake up at five o'clock every day, maybe six on the weekends. I'm insane. I like yeah, to Yeah, well, you know, you said you're insane, not me. So. No, it's, okay. it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I, I, if the sun beats me up, I'm very upset. Oh, so okay. the first thing I do when I get up is reply to everybody who tweeted me overnight because I feel that if somebody talks to you, it's like in real life, if I say something to you and you don't say something back, it's rude. So I, I, I carry the manners over into the digital world. So I like to respond to everybody who responded to me overnight. I follow back everybody who followed me overnight. And then I go through, you know, just my lists. I, I, the ones that I follow closely, I really go do in you and just cleanse. Use, do you just use the Twitter follow? Do you just look at what Twitter's telling you, or do you have, like, there's, there's some really great tool, software sites out there. There are. Uh, there's websites that can help you, there and are. it can be really, especially at your level the, of the engagement. Ones, the ones that I use, first off, everything that I do mostly is done by hand, just because, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm closer to the conversation if I can actually dive into it, because if I go to somebody's account, and then I see they have a conversation with somebody else, I can jump to that person's account, and the automation tools, you know, they're not going to always chase the conversations like you are. Mm -hmm. They'll chase the words and they'll chase the search terms, but they won't always chase the conversations the way that I want to. So I have no problem with that. It's definitely extra time, but I feel like I'm very, a lot closer to my followers doing that. But the one thing that I do do um, for automation is the unfollow tool. I use manageflitter.com. Okay. Manage Flutter. And that site is absolutely heavenly to me. It heavenly. is very, very, very useful. Okay. Good to know. I Very good. I know, again, uh, I think I've mentioned this before. I think I was telling you about Jessica Northey, who uh, oh, yeah. focuses on country music. Right. She's she's all about building uh, her, her following on social media. It makes a huge difference. And, uh, and if you want to build a brand based on your community, then you should do that. <laughs> Check out... Hoda and Kathy Lee. Okay. <laughs> maybe we should do that. Yeah, they drink wine. So maybe we, should we have that? You know, wine keeps coming up. That's like the drinking game of the show today. Um, they drink. Do you ever watch that show? They, they drink wine at like 9 o'clock in the morning. Nice. I could go for Seriously? a glass of wine right now. 9 a.m.? But now it's like lunchtime, so it's like appropriate. Listen, 9 a.m. here is noon in Miami. Oh, I like the way you say <laughs> Speaking of Florida, Alex has been where's awfully Alex? quiet. I know. Where's, where's Alex? Alex? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm just listening to you guys. <laughs> so, in fact, you're from you're from you're from France, right? No, I was I was born in Paris, but I'm actually Brazilian and Finnish. My dad is from Brazil. My mom's from Finland. So uh, and I speak those languages. Well, I know that when my parents lived in uh, Paris, they would talk about how the workers on their house would at lunch, you know, drink a bunch of wine, lay down, and take like an hour and a half nap, and then they start working again. Um, totally different. Uh, Alex, are you going to tell the story how we met? Oh, it seems yeah, appropriate. So, seeing how so, Twitter's the theme. Uh, all right. I know. I know. So <laughs> I was I was uh, well, actually on that. vacation in in Phuket uh, in Thailand, which is just a little bit south of uh, Bangkok, and uh, I was tweeting out that you know it's incredible to be in Thailand and stuff. And so some friends of mine in Miami said, "Hey, check it out. Uh, Scott Eddie lives in Thailand. Uh, you know, connect with him." And Scott saw that and said, "Hey, Alex, uh, you know, what's up? Come uh, come and visit me." Once again, so chasing the conversation. 
There you so go. Literally a couple <laughs> hours later, I, I, uh, I, I rented a scooter and, uh, you know, I, I went over to uh, Scott's incredible apartment in, in Phuket. And, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was amazing. And that was the start of a friendship. Well, and that's where we talk about meeting people on the internet and then actually meeting them in real life and building the the relationship and the brand. One of the questions that we get around, um, you know, building uh, your your you know network, building your social media presence. How do you get a lot of fans? How do you get a lot of followers? I literally spent two hours on the phone with somebody helping them. Maybe an hour and a half. I don't know. I felt like longer. Uh, you know, helping somebody understand how to build their. Uh, their network um, and how to tie in traditional media to their social media last night. And I think a big part of that is once you start building your digital presence and your following on social media, how do you make that real life? How do you meet them in real life? And something that you've done, Alex, and I was, uh, you know, we talked about social media day, which is something that Mashable started. I don't know. What was it? 2000 and two no no i think it was i think it was about 2008 eight. Maybe. yeah 2008 yeah. i'm trying to like go way back too far <laughs> I, but i had the first social media day in colorado springs which is where i lived at the time when they did that and and, and then those have continued to grow all across the globe you you've done that as well as many other networking events pulling people off of the internet uh into real life venues and events what are some of the events that you manage besides social media day yeah. Right. And so, Tanya, to that point, that's been my entire experience with social media. I mean, that's really why I got onto social media. And in Paris, I, I met these bloggers that I'd been reading online. I would then meet them in real life. And always it was an exceptional experience. And, you know, even using Twitter back back in the day when Twitter started, uh, I, I've been on Twitter for like eight years, I think. Uh, we had tweet ups. These were like old school tweet ups where <laughs> they still call you, know, them you figured out. Yeah, you, you figured out who else was tweeting in your city and then you like figure out a bar to go and, and meet up and then you'd meet up these other Twitterers that you'd interact with online. And those were always exceptional experiences, uh, especially early on. Um, but, but still, um, so Mashable, the social media day, and it's really popular social media day. And there's been about 300, I think, uh, around the world, at, you know, on June 30th or around that time. So I've turned that into a day long conference. And uh, we've had um, three of those uh, in Miami. And these have become pretty large. And uh, the largest one, we had 900 people coming to our, our opera house, the Arch Center. We had 40 speakers. Uh, we had uh, three or four different tracks. And, uh, you know, we had a beginners, intermediate, and advanced track of speakers uh, on social media topics. And really, this was an opportunity for people to meet each other, people who were into social media to meet each other. But we had small business owners there. We had social media consultants. We had students. We had some journalists and uh, just an amazing experience overall. How important is it to pull people? I mean, we t South by Southwest, in fact, is coming up. And um, I think, you know, you, you mentioned, Alex, to me privately that that's something that it's really gotten too big to actually meet and network with people. We've seen that happen every year over and over again. I hear people say, I'm not going to go this year. Who else is not going to go this year? And I think even though it's continuing to grow, I think the audience is expanding, but you're not really able to network and meet people. Is that important or is it really more about actually getting the content, hearing the speakers and participating? I mean, I, I feel like the takeaway that I hear, I'm hearing from people over and over again is that it's not relevant as, an, as a networking event any longer. You know, the, the content is obviously excellent. And if you speak at South by Southwest, it's because you, you really know something about what you're speaking about. The thing uh, for many people is that you, you're already so familiar with that content anyway. You know who the speakers are. You're familiar with their work. You've been reading them online. You've been following their blogs and stuff. So you're pretty much familiar with that. So really, the big uh, you know uh, advantage of going to these conferences is actually meeting the people and meeting them in the in the hallways and having those uh, impromptu conversations. What happens with South by Southwest though is that it it is so big and there's so many things going on at the same time that you feel pressured to be like at three or four places at the same time. So you never have those really, uh, you know, more meaningful conversations with the people you're meeting. You're just having like a minute conversation and then you you have to run off to the next place. So at smaller conferences, you do have that chance to have longer time. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna name drop, but someone you might meet at South by Southwest and just get like 30 seconds to speak with uh, at a conference like Le Web in Paris, which is still a pretty big conference. Um, you might have a whole dinner with that person, um, you know, at night, you know, spend a couple hours with that person 
Whereas in South by Southwest, you'll only get like a minute or two. So for me, it's it's more worth it to go to smaller conferences than than these large, huge things. So what is something that you would actually, speaking of what, you know, the, along the lines of what Scott, Andy, and I were talking about, building, you know, building lists, following a thousand people a day, spending that time in the morning, maybe just engaging with your audience. Um, you, you mentioned too, Scott, that you do schedule some content. You don't, everything isn't uh, live. Is that accurate or? Yeah, I, I schedule my quotes. I, I schedule quotes 24 hours a day, every two or three hours. Um, and then my news, pretty much 80% is me feeding in live news. And I have a couple news streams that go in there. And then I, during the day, throughout the day, I tweet, obviously. How did you go about getting the first uh, piece of business off of your following? Was it they approached you? Did you approach them? I started, one, once I started gaining 10, 20, 30,000 followers, and, you know, this was three years ago when, you know, everybody didn't have 100,000 followers. So it was more rare back then and I started getting questions from different brands in Thailand and all over Southeast Asia, you know, can you push this out? Can you push this out? So finally I said, well, look, I have an entrepreneurial mindset. I set up a marketing agency, hired a very smart team, uh, much smarter than me. And I drove traffic to them and, you know, we worked with Marriott, Starwood, you know, some of the big brands out there and we did some cool stuff. How did you get the heads in beds, as as the hospitality industry likes to say? I mean, how do you how did you at least be able to prove kind of the ROI of what you were doing for them? Were they able to track that? The the, the problem is in the 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 travel industry, and I, I gotta say, probably pretty much in every industry, but the travel industry, hotel brands overall, they're realizing it now. But you know, in the past year or two. They really didn't get, if they didn't see the ROI in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. if dollar bill literally didn't fall mm -hmm. on top of their head right away, it wasn't worth it to them. They wouldn't want to pay a full-time staff to do social media. They, did, they didn't want to pay for campaigns. And if so, if they did, it was a very, very small amount. So, you know, it, it's the ROI, it depends what they're looking for. Um, yeah, you could do promo codes and you can do mm -hmm. things like that, but it, it's to really get a hotel to get it, you know, they get it much more these days than a few years ago. I think they do. I think, um, again, it's it's kind of like this evolution of traditional marketing. I think uh, what there are certainly some tactics in, in the hospitality that you can use, including yeah. getting people to write reviews about your your uh, venue to your you know hotel or resort. You know, and if there's any resort out there that really wants to reach out to me to have me help promote your resort, <laughs> what what? There's nothing wrong with that. I actually, there's one, uh, anyway. Um, so I, I think that has been not just a challenge though in the hospitality industry, it's been the, a challenge with any industry, getting the right leadership, the right marketing team internally to kind of get what you're doing and then put together the right tactics using uh, reviews, getting people to post pictures, offering specials sure. and that sort of thing. That will actually generally encourage people. And it's not about the likes, uh, but it is about the followers and it's, 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 it's about getting people to, to be a part of your community. Alex. It's about the conversation. Exactly. That's, you know. The conversation. So it sounds so simple, but it's actually very much true. <laughs> Um, what is it, Alex, that you uh, try to encourage when you, 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 you know, you meet these people at meetups and uh, you talk to your students? You know, what is it that you try to encourage them to do from the standpoint of engaging on social media? Is it is it about just putting more content out there? Is it about uh, building that relationship? What is it? Well, so I think, you know, the Internet is, is very social media is very local uh, as it is global, but it's very local. It's about the, com the community you live in and actually meeting those people. Uh, around you, um, and that gives kind of a social proof. You know, when people see you face to face, it's a very different kind of connection than than online. And so, when you go to an event or a tweet up or a social media day or bar camp, um, you're actually meeting these people, and then they will connect with you more easily online. You know, a lot of friendships happen like that. You 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 meet and then you follow each other, or you add each other to Facebook or or Twitter. So I think that's very important to to realize that it's it's very important to engage the tech community because those are the people. So for example, if you're a business owner, you should create events where you're inviting the social media community to your places, a restaurant or a hotel, because those people are then gonna check in at your place, they're gonna Instagram it, they're gonna talk about it on Facebook and on Twitter and stuff. And so I think, you know, you give the opportunity for people to meet in a nice place and then those people 
pay you back by tweeting about your place and Instagramming and, and making you, um, you know, creating buzz about you online. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's a good engagement tactic, I would say. What is it that you do for this organization that you work for? Um, and, and how important you talk about how relevant that is, uh, talk a little bit about, um, your work there for, as the, uh, residents at FIU. What is that? Okay, so the Knight Foundation uh, used to uh, own some newspapers and, and the Miami Herald. They've divested of some of those, but they have a large uh, fund or, or endowment. And they've really been um, investing in the, uh, the future of news, uh, the future of media, the future of communications. They run all kinds of uh, contests and they give a lot of grants. Uh, and in Miami especially, they've been uh, very significant. Now, the Knight Foundation has different chairs in universities uh, across the nation, or they have research fellows. And for the first time, um, they've created something called the Knight Innovator in Residence. So um, I'm, I'm the first one. I'm the innovator at FIU, which is the nation's fourth or fifth largest college. There's 55,000 students. And so I'm at the School of Journalism and Communication, where uh, I'm really acting as a catalyst, uh, bringing new ideas, bringing some thought leadership, bringing new events, new competitions. Um, and, and really bridging the uh, Miami's tech community with the student population at, at FIU and, and, and the journalism students at FIU. One of the questions from the chat room about um, hotels and uh, local community, it's as, as Cisco is my dog, asks, all hotels exist in local community. How does a global community or global company interact with a local community? How, how does a global company focus in on a local community. I think that's, it's pretty, you know, you talked about Marriott and some of these other really huge brands. How do they drill down on a local community and get them engaged? They really need to see what conversations are going on at the local level. How do they do that? Okay. So say you're opening up a new Marriott in San Francisco. So you find the other hotels that... That is not really a local... I mean, it's small. It's not a small community, but no, that's, okay, a little, well, that's, a good, that's an example. Wh okay. Whatever, ABC Town. Yeah. So, and you need to find what other hotels are super active in social media, what conversations they're having, who's following them, who's commenting on them, because typically a person is not going to communicate with a brand online unless they are thinking about using them, an evangelist of that brand or, you know, very possibly going to be using them in the short-term future. So why not? Those are the lowest hanging fruit. Those are the people that you need to target. Those are the people. And, and don't, don't think that you can put out enough good content where these people are going to find you. They will not. You have to be aggressive and go after them. You need to go out there, follow 100 of these people. They will follow back. Especially if you stay really focused on a specific type of content. Like you, you mentioned certain certain words that you tweet about. How important are hashtags? Super important. Why it's is that? Because they're, you know, Twitter first started started out with with the hashtags being the most relevant, the relevant thing that you can search about. Now, you know, you can search words and, and things like that and the hashtags aren't the most important, but they're definitely relevant. And for me, it's just... It's a clean tweet, you know, when it, when you, when you just have everything organized, when you have your URL shortened, it, it's just, I'm very anally organized with everything that I do. So, you know, I, I like to make it as simple and easy for my followers to engage with me as absolutely possible. Do you take your phone with you? I see you doing it here at the news desk and we encourage you to do that. Um, do you, do you respond to people wherever you are? I mean, or is that no like for a specific time of day? No matter where So I you're am. out drinking your wine this afternoon with Princess Kim. Yes. And Jason, you're going to be, you're going to be tweeting. That's your new name. <laughs> Princess Kim. And Kim sorry, with a Y. It's, it's stuck. <laughs> it did. Um, yeah. So, I mean, will, will that is, and how important is that? Do you feel like your, your fans, your followers respond to that? Absolutely. Why is it there are celebrities that don't have as many fans and followers? And again, it, it's, I know people that have bought you know, I'm using the quote signs in case you're Absolutely. just listening. Who have bought um, fans and followers, and that and you know, Twitter's on to you on that. And they, it's, they. I mean, look what happened in the Instagram purge a couple months ago. Yeah. How many celebrities Twitter purges got all the time too. Rushed. I know. So <laughs> it it doesn't behoove you to do that because you're just going to lose them, and your you your like clients are going to see, and you look like a fool. You look like a fool. You look like a fool. I'm telling you. 
Oy vey. <laughs> but it is important. And it's these are some really simple things. And so I, I got enough emails, like I said, about, you know, how do you build a bigger fan base? And I know it sounds really simple, but you've actually given some 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 a, a, a helpful advice on hashtags, on building lists, which I've heard over and over again the from list. some of the most successful people. The most important thing, the list. So what do you do when you get ready to start a list? How do you do that? I, I uh, first off, I already create the list of the top topics that I want to follow. You know, I, I use TweetDeck. As, you uh, like the tweet deck? I love tweet I like deck. the hoot sweet. Lo I love tweet deck. I love tweet um, deck too. <laughs> and, yeah, and I use, okay, gang up I use on the me app there. and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if they go back to that screen where they were showing my list and, you know, I just, I create these lists and like before I go somewhere, like this California list was the most recent one. Am I like, on that list? When I, when I came I here. Oh, donuts. Okay. The, the, the first off, the reason <laughs> I came here is six days I've been here for four weeks. Six days before that, Jason actually sent me a tweet. Six days later, I'm on a flight. Obviously, it was convincing. And I was on a flight to San Francisco. <laughs> right. Within those days, I created the California uh, group. I started, or list, I started adding people. I started looking to see who is engaging, who's the most active people out here. I already started building my following for San Francisco and all over the, the Bay Area three or four days before I even landed. Because I know as soon as I land, I'm going to start tweeting pictures, tweeting news, tweeting everything. You're a media outlet. Yes. How important is it to follow other lists, other people's lists? Do you do that? I do. I do. Do you find people following your lists? Yeah. I have a lot of subscribers. So that's obviously relevant to another brand, right? Sure. Absolutely. It's And the great thing about Twitter is it's unlike Facebook. Facebook is... I think the, the numbers were 83% of the accounts on Facebook had some sort of three layers of privacy. On Twitter, I think they almost 90% of the accounts on Twitter are open to the public. So if you're, if you're diving into a new industry, you can literally find out who your competitors are, what conversations are they having, and with who, and what are their clients asking them and telling them. Who do you follow? Who are your peers? Who do you feel like is doing a really good job as a peer? Not necessarily a brand or maybe a personal brand might be more appropriate. Who's doing a good job of that? Gary Vaynerchuk oh, is my always absolute a... idol. I think you're only mentioning Gary because of the wine. He's the wine guy. Again, I, it's I'm the actually, wine thing. I'm actually not <laughs> because I never learned about Wine Library TV until I actually started listening to his podcast. Oh. I started following him and he. we've had a couple brief conversations um, just because he's active on Twitter and he talks to the everyday person. He does. And, and that is, I, I mean, he does it right. Gary is actually, and, I, and I've had Gary on a previous show. I need to have him here on Mavericks. He is actually, there's, he, you know what? Look who follows you. Uh, uh, he's got Mike Elgin on there. Has a little <laughs> picture of Mike Elgin. Um, and, and look, Jeffrey Needles too. Wow. Okay, so um, I will say that about Gary. He's probably one of the original uh, guys who was literally talking about his wine and getting people locally, you know, to 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 point out to the chat room, to, to pay attention to the wine specials he had using social media. He's literally built a huge, you know, empire Life. just around his brand. He, he's got... He's got his media agency. He's certainly got his own personal brand. He does a lot of different things now besides just talking about wine, which he still does. Um, but he's a great example of somebody who's kind of did it very early on. Um, who, what brands are actually doing it? Maybe not a personal brand, but what businesses that you see are actually engaging with consumers? I got to tell you, I thought Comcast was there at one point, but I just recently had an issue and Come on, Comcast. I tweeted you. I even went to your website. You said, this is what I should do. I already knew what to do, but I did it anyway. I got no response. Who's doing a good job of that? Well, That's first because off, Frank man. Eliason left. What was that? I know. We love Frank. Well, <laughs> Frank Eliason was at Comcast and he left. He's at Citibank now. So I know. He, he's a regular on the show. I love Frank. And he will tell you. He'll be the first one to say they don't listen anymore. Who listens? Well, the, the first thing is, is you're not answering a tweet as a brand is basically like your customer service department not answering your phone. Mm -hmm. like, it, like it just doesn't make sense. Well, I found in the, in the hospitality industry, W Hotels are very, very good as a brand. The W? Yes. Mm -hmm. Number one, they don't outsource their digital uh, at all. They have everything in house and they have people dedicated to it, which is, it's important. But again, this is a young brand. This is a trendy brand. This is a very 
forward thinking brand, very hip. They're not stuck in the old ways. They're not stuck like, you know, they're a fortune 500 company and that's, we are who we are. You know, they're not an IBM. You it's just it. trying to catch up to technology you now. Hear that right here on Marketing Mavericks. The W is an innovative, young thinking brand. <laughs> Go stay there. They'll tweet about it. My favorite brand. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is doing a good job? Uh, in or out of the hospitality space? <clears throat> hospitality. You know, I I, I find that uh, you know I monitor the 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 wine industry quite quite a lot, and I, I visited Napa two times since I've been here. I think we have another trip coming up soon. Ain't that right, Sensei? Ain't that uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I find that when I, because when I go to a place, it's the the test tweet when I include, I, I search, it, it doesn't matter if it takes me an hour, I find their Twitter handle and I actually insert it into a tweet because I want to know if they engage. Everywhere I go, I look for the company uh, Twitter account and, you know, I post pictures and videos and this and that. And, I, you know, in Napa, Chateau Montalena is very good. Tedeschi is very good. Um, uh, what was the other one? Spring Mountain is very good. You know, I mean, it, it's these people, are they're, they're on it. They're on it. They're on it. We've actually had uh, Paul Mayberry, who um, works with the White. I don't know if you guys know him. You should. Um, I'll certainly connect you. I'll tweet about it. Wow. And I'll tweet him. <laughs> he works in the wine uh, wine business yeah. in the social space, and he he would be a good person for you to get to know. Again, wine is definitely the um, the go to word for the show today. How important are some of these other sites? As we're kind of you know, I, I want to our Google Plus. Do you use it? I'm. I have a presence. I'm not active. Okay. Facebook. Very active. Okay. Um, any other sites that are important? Instagram. To you? Instagram. Yeah. How important is Instagram? In order of importance, it would be Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Wow, Instagram's kicking the tail. All right, okay. What, what would you say about that, Alex? I mean, how important are some of these sites, and what would your recommendation be to somebody who, again, is trying to build a community before the brand? What would you? What would your advice be to somebody who's trying to do that? Yeah, I would say the top three. It depends, again, what what kind of brand you are and is it business to consumer or business to business uh, if it's b2b then linkedin would be definitely very important but if it's b2c i would say instagram uh facebook and twitter i think there's a couple other things though i think vine is is interesting and snapchat i think is super interesting i think snapchat is you know is growing very quickly it's it's worth billions but i think it's poised for so much further growth the team behind snapchat is innovating all the time and they keep coming out with these new things and it's it's just amazing i think just amazing or it's as john totally here amazing. would say well, uh, well you know i think the thing with snapchat is that it's totally native to the phone i mean it's more native than than instagram or anything else we've seen i mean the videos on snapchat everything the whole snapchat experience is completely native to the phone i think it's really the first app we've seen like that well not only that it also uh which is is i think that's really important that you point out it's so so much a different type of experience and brands that are really picking up on that are doing a great job at really reaching a younger audience which i think the hospitality industry is going to need to understand you talked about the w being really forward thinking you're going to have to to get people to travel and visit you and and stay at your hotel um use your services i mean we see younger uh, millennials using, you know, the Uber and Lyft, and they're not using traditional means of, of, you know, transportation. They're not using traditional means of staying. We got Airbnb coming up on the show in a few weeks and, um, they're, they're not traveling and staying at the places they used to stay. So in fact, Mike Elgin is staying at an Airbnb when he goes to Barcelona for Rebel World Congress. So anyway, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show today. There's always a lot to talk about. Again, this is a big, big conversation for people who want to build their own brand and they want to build community. I've seen so many people that I'm friends with become very, very successful and they kind of own it because they already built their community and then they can kind of write their own ticket to what they want to do and who they choose to work with and what industry they de decide to work within. And as Alex would put it, they get to meet people in real life and build that network even larger. So Scott Eddy, Mr. Scott Eddy on Twitter, um, if somebody wants to follow you, if they want to maybe follow your list or connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Follow me and talk to me. If you talk to me, odds are I'm going to look at your profile. I'm going to look at what you tweet about and I'll add you to a list if your content is at that level. So it's... 
Just talk. I talk back. Just I'm human. Talk. Don't talk back. Wait, isn't that a song? <laughs> I don't know, from the 80s maybe. Um, and they also need to check out the app, that, uh, which is launching in two weeks, you said? Yeah, absolutely. Go check it out, zipkick.com. Sign up for it, and you'll get the notification. Is as that soon available as on iOS and Android? Or? Yes. Okay, very good. And uh, Alex, if somebody wants to follow you, connect with you, attend one of your events, study in one of your classes, or meet you, how should they do that? You know, I'm very much like Scott. I mean, I, I reply to every single person that, that uh, connects with me online, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, anywhere, Vine, whatever. If, if you talk to me, I'll talk back. Um, I'm Alex DC on most of these services or Alex underscore DC. It depends. But usually I'm Alex DC. Uh, but also, you know, I'm always, I'm very easy. You can just Google my name, very easy to find. Or then I'm always at, you know, organizing one of these events or then at one of these local events in Miami. We've got... An incredible tech scene here and uh, there's events all the time and so I think you know we're all very social friendly and we're out at these things uh, you know at nighttime. When am I gonna meet you guys? Well I mean obviously you know hey Scott Eddie really cares he show, he drove all the way with Princess oh Ken my God. and Jason to the Twitbrook house and here Alex is like relaxing in Florida what's up that well, well, yeah, what's going on me? I would love to be there I mean look at your beautiful studio I would love to be there <laughs> you, you gotta come check out Zipkick headquarters hey where is that For sure it's listen you have no idea oh we I want to like have an idea we have like 100 bottles of wine in Zipkick headquarters what? <laughs> Again with the wine. Wine. <laughs> well, I want to thank both of you guys for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. I will be following you and your list. And you know what? You've inspired me to create some of my own lists as well. So I've been kind of slacking on that. I think I should uh, tweak my list and follow more people. I want to thank everybody for listening to the show today. Please follow me by going to at Tanya Hall Radio on Twitter. I will connect you to both Scott and Alex. In fact, they've been tweeting about the show all day. If you're following right now, you'll see their tweets and be mm -hmm. sure to follow them and their list. And uh, you can also email me, which is where we got the idea for the show today, at, at mavericks at twit.com. TV. That's Mavericks at twit.tv. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I'm pretty engaged on Facebook as well. And I work on some of the other sites and I need to get my Instagram going as Carly would tell me. So I want to thank everybody again for listening to the show today. Again, next week we'll be at 1230 Pacific time. That's 1230 to 130. Until then, everybody have a great week. Talk to you then.